This whole level is gonna be nothing but interior cages. So this right here is gonna be one giant cage about 24 feet wide by about 30 feet deep. We're gonna to have to slant our fence so each one of these sections is gonna to have to be angle cut and trimmed to be able to fit in here. Chain link is sharp, it's pokey, so we gotta be very careful not to tear the insulation. All these posts, yeah, they got here on our shoulders. It's like we're training for the fence Olympics. We're going to go ahead and line the edges of our base plates up. We are still gonna go ahead and check everything by eye to make sure that everything is there, but we're using this so that, that way we can get our posts mounted and placed just a little bit faster. We're tracing out the circles of our plate. That way he can see where his bit needs to lay in case of his bit wanders just a little bit. Now that all these holes are ready to be drilled, we need to take the post off. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the post off and we're not gonna rotate it. So that way we know which way that flange was sitting when we marked it. We are mounting all of our posts with our three and a half inch concrete lag screws. They're a half inch diameter by three inches long. Normally on the old traditional concrete anchor that the cavemen created, you would drive it in the ground, put the nut on it, and then suck the anchor back out, causing trip hazards. This is going to be nothing but a walkway. So if we have those studs sticking out, you're gonna end up tripping on one of those studs because it's too tall. Whereas this is a nice clean surface, and all of them are the same height, creating less of a trip hazard. By the time we are said and done in this room, we will have 88 plate mounted posts inside this building. We should probably, really probably do our stretches like, oh, you don't want to tear a muscle. We're gonna do some framework. We've got all the fittings laid out that we need to be able to start the framework process. There is one fitting that we are gonna use. It's a little bit different. We haven't used it in any of our videos yet before. And it is a two-way four-inch brace band. This post right here is gonna be used three times. So it's gonna be used that way. It's gonna be used that way. It's gonna be used that way. So there's gonna be three different stretches of fabric going into this post. So the way that we are gonna slim up how many fittings we use is we're gonna use a two-way brace band. That's a two-way brace band. It's still a brace band, but what they did is they cut it in half, gave it an ear on this side and an ear on this side so that you can run it two different ways. So now we're gonna do our rail ends again. This will be for our middle rail, the rail that comes off right behind me. And we're gonna do our top rail. And the one on the top, so my bottom one I have going up, my top one I have flipped it so it's going down. Now the benefit to using a two-way brace band versus using three brace bands on a T-post is you can make all three of these top rails in one uniform line. So now I have a T in my fence, I have brace rails and top rails going three different directions and they're all at the same height. When you do your tension wire, you should be lifting it above your grade mark, just about two inches, so that, that way you can hit the first full diamond, and that's where it's supposed to get hog ringed at. Where were you on the night of the 15th? I was, I don't know. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put a truss rod in this section. The reason we're gonna do one in this section and not the rest of them 
is because this run of fabric, this stretch of fence is longer, is greater than two sections. It's actually three sections long, so therefore we're gonna go ahead and put truss rods in. Start the bend, put your foot on it, then finish your bend. I put just enough tension on the truss rod just to the point where I can feel that the line post is getting shoved into the terminal post just a little bit and it is under a little bit of tension. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna explain to you, hey, 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 We're gonna go ahead and take a measurement for this section right here. We are going to cut our chain link down on the ground and then we're gonna bring the section that we're cutting up so that we don't have to pack a full roll of chain link up here. We have 161 and we're gonna go ahead and take four inches off that. Hopefully we're taking enough off to the point where we can still make the fabric tight, but if we need to take any more off, we can pull another individual straw out up here. We're taking this one out because I think we can get a little bit more stretch out of it. Four inch bear holds to stretch this because it's so short. That's, that's really taken a lot of effort to get that. So this fabric is, is pretty dang tight. This post is three feet tall. This post right here is five feet, one inches tall. And then this post right here is our traditional eight foot one right here. So we're gonna take our chain link fence and we'll just have to angle cut all of that stuff finished getting all the fabric up, we finished getting it tied. We have gone through, we have put in some single swing gates, we have put in some double swing gates. Here's a single swing, which enters into this cage. When you're confiscating stuff and you need somewhere to put it, the cage is awesome. The bigger cages have double swing gates called double drives. It opens up to, into a giant cage. If they had a pallet of something, they could run a pallet jack in here, six foot walkways, and then six foot doorways to match the walkways. The latches that, we've, that we're using are malleable inch and five eighths by four inch latches. That is more of a commercial grade latch. It's not really intended for uh, residential use because it is so heavy. On our double drive gates, typically what we would use is we would use a drop rod. And that's why we have such a big gap here is because it's intended for a drop rod. There's not really a good way for us to mount a center stop so we chose to go with the strong arm latch we got one more double drive to hang one more single swing to hang so we're gonna go do that now every gate gets a collar because that's what rests on the top of the bulldog hinge and not a tension band 
we don't like to rest our gates on tension bands because the more they rotate, the more they can cut into those tension bands. And if you open it enough times, you can cut through the tension band. And once you do that, the gate will fall. So there we can see that we're just a touch high and we're gonna go ahead and take our hammer and tap them down just a little bit. It's too tight, the forks need to be bent out just a little bit. Perfect. All right, so now we just need to go ahead and drill that hole out. We're gonna use a bit out of our drill bit set. As long as the lid is on, you're not gonna lose the drill bits. It gives you a list of all the sizes in there. There's 29 drill bits in here. Ta-da, so easy even you can do it. What are you doing up there, Dan? Oh, I'm just putting some caps on. You gotta put a hat on it. You don't want it to, you don't want the top of the gate to get cold. Here we go, here's like the last, last cap. <laughs> All right, so out of everything that you've seen, this job is almost complete. There's one key thing that we have to do. We gotta put on a fence sign. We want people to know, hey, SWI did that. That is a good fence right there. Now I know some of you like to collect fence signs because you have a giant fence sign wall going on or you're starting one. If you don't have our sign, make sure and see the link below so you can purchase one and put it on your wall. Oh man, we are so glad that this job is done. It's very unique. Uh, just having to pack everything up those stairs. My calves, dude, I got Popeye calves right now. Like just been eating spinach. 100% glad that we were able to show you guys every step of the way. Now, if you guys want to see how to weld up a chain link gate, make sure and see this video right here. If you guys want to see some more cool gate options, such as how to install a panic bar on a gate, make sure and see this video right here. This is Dan with SWI. We are Wyoming's Fence Company. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. You have a good dang day.